This is the most severe fire I've ever seen. The microwave oven itself has metal in it. The cooking chamber walls and the mesh on the door, which keeps the waves from escaping, are both metal. Metals conduct electricity with tons of electrons that move freely. You don't even need metal to elicit this sparking reaction. If you create sharp edges in foods, like hot dogs, they'll spark too. So what's happening now is the two jets are forming a swirling vortex of fire that's surrounding the crucible there. And we're gonna put this lid on to keep as much heat in as we can. Okay, here's our glass bottle number one, ready? You can see the label starting to burn off a little bit. It does look like it's melting already. awesome. You can tell it's got some viscosity now. We're not going to worry too much about the labels because those are going to burn right off, I promise. Microwaves themselves are a form of electromagnetic radiation. These waves bounce off the oven's metal walls and are absorbed by water, fat, and sugar in your food, heating it up. Put metal in there and the microwaves will cause the metal's electrons to move. These moving electrons can produce sparks and heat. make up the structure anymore. It's still smoldering. This was a neighborhood pharmacy. You can't even lock down or they've been melted. Hey guys, it's 11.30 a.m. on October 10th, 2017, and I just wanted to go over some basic facts with you guys about fires. The average house fire burns at a temperature of about 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit, which isn't hot enough to destroy most metals and earthly made substance. And if an item is well placed and small in size, its chances of survival increase drastically. Let's take a look at the burning point of a couple of materials. Glass burns at around 20, 2600 to 2900 degrees Fahrenheit, which is more than double the regular temperature of house fires or forest fires. Let's see what we can find out about aluminum. Aluminum melts at around 1220 degrees. Some alloys burn a little bit hotter, uh, around 1900 degrees. Now let's take a look at what the National Institute of Fire Safety and Safety Training say what will not generally burn in a house fire. Jewelry, because it's metal. Silver coins, because they're metal. Filing cabinets, steel cabinet, steel filing cabinets are built to last so that businesses won't have to deal with the loss of important files after building fires. Many people keep personal documents in filing cabinets, which are often kept in home offices. And it says here that uh, no, me, silver burns around 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go down to barbecue grills, cookware, some appliances, stone table, fire safes. Um, let's see, it says here about tools. 
because the melting point of carbon steel is between 2600 and 28 degrees Fahrenheit. And the melting point of stainless steel is roughly 2700 degrees. Well, let me just show you some pictures here of normal house fires, what, what's usually left afterwards. There's a bunch of rubble and everything's black. Usually, usually the frames of the buildings stand. And there's a bunch of crap around the trees, or in, you know, around the place, buildings. This, the frame of the building stays intact. The, the entire building does not disappear. There's still debris. There's a huge debris field after these things. You see there's like gutters and stuff. And the wood, even though it does burn, it doesn't totally burn. Now this is white stuff from what they put the fire out with, but, but generally you see that all of these houses, every one of them is black. Now this, this car, was right next to a fire and it still has glass its wheels are still intact it was actually this thing actually burned but it didn't melt the tires it didn't melt the glass in the vehicle you see all the rubble this is just rubble because these pl these places implode they I mean the, after the, the structure falls apart it collapses but you still see they're all singed they're all black and even in the forest fires the, the trees themselves are still black and you can see, you know, you have bricks on the bottom and not all the aluminum siding or, or, or vinyl siding melts. Look at these, these structure, the outward frame of the, of, the, of the houses still stands. But that's not what we see in these crazy forest fires. The entire things just disappear. Should, should be visible to the people with eyes to see. Here's the build, here's this neighborhood before. And I want you to look, you guys, there's absolutely nothing left. You don't see any part of any of the structures anywhere. This isn't possible. There's something else going on here. We're actually using trillion watt lasers now. And if you don't want to use your energy to strike your match, you can just hold it in the beam of light. A one watt laser can light a match. Imagine then the power of a 500 trillion watt laser. That's exactly what they've built here at the National Ignition Facility in California where engineers have just finished constructing the laser to end all lasers. And now we're learning that scientists and researchers are looking at how to change the weather on purpose. That's right, lasers now. Take a look at this, folks. See the stain, a stone block wall? It's all gone, folks. The heat had to be enough to melt the wall. Columns were melted. Wrought iron steel melted. No glass, 2,600 degrees to melt glass no glass. How about metal uh, tires? We saw the rims and there's no rubber at all on any of the tires. The rubbers were completely gone. Well, here it says in sciencing, if you put a rubber tire in a furnace, even a hot one, it won't melt. The tires are vulcanized, which means they're through a process that combines the rubber molecules with carbon and other elements to prevent them from oxidizing or burning. It's why hot rodders can burn rubber without setting anything on fire. Tell or what was the Hilton Hotel? And the fountain grove in right below it which was but look at the steel look at the steel melted and twisted folks that means the temperatures was above 2500 degrees fahrenheit it wasn't a firestorm because it happened right away this was a usa something wildfires this is this is a new trend we're seeing where the entire building just disappears there's absolutely nothing left and then here's this neighborhood before you don't see any part of any of the structures anywhere everything everything's gone but the trees one washing machine but where are the granite countertops where are the glass doors where's any of the metal framing where's the bricks where's any of the stuff that held these houses together and why isn't there any rubble but the tree is still standing and the, sh and the grasses are still here but the cars that were left have no glass they're all smashed to pieces
Look at this, the garbage cans. Come on, guys, all the garbage cans are here. But look at the cars, look at the condition of these vehicles. Look at this, this is all smashed and bent. And look at the twigs on the ground, these things should have caught on fire. How come there's, how come there's pine needles and stuff all in the path? Why isn't there anything standing whatsoever but the trees? This is supposed to be a forest fire. How come the forest didn't catch on fire? Not even the tree branches. Look at there's just twigs and stuff everywhere. Why did the twigs not burn? But every single solitary piece of two by four that built these houses is standing. I mean, it's not standing, it's gone. It's all disappeared. There's no aluminum siding. There's no bricks. There's nothing. Internet users on social media have pointed out that the unusual and bizarre burn patterns resembles that of a just discharged high energy beam melting steel in cars yet leaving dry trees untouched just meters away. At around 9.45 p.m. on Sunday, October 8th of 2017, the Tubbs fire began in Northern California. And by the time the sun came up, over a thousand homes were destroyed. Videos and photographs show how this so-called forest fire seemed to spare the wild and somehow jump from house to house. CNN reported that the so-called forest fire jumped to the freeway. Hundreds of photographs show cars with melted trails of aluminum alloys from what must have been an unprecedented amount of power. The average forest fire burns at 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. Aluminum alloys will melt at temperatures between 1200 and 2000 degrees, but many of these cars were nowhere near a forest fire. Some cars were flipped over. The heat must have been intense. Not only was it able to melt aluminum alloy, but consistently, every home that caught fire was leveled to white powdery ash in less than 12 hours. By October 31st, the Tubbs fire had destroyed 5,643 buildings. PG&E, Pacific Gas and Electric. PG&E was found responsible for 16 of the fires, over $10 billion in damages. All of this while producing $1 billion a year in profits for the Rothschild Investment Group. PG&E warned the public that the fires will not just continue, but will grow larger every season. They warn their investors that future liability will force PG&E into bankruptcy. In June, utility officials told state lawmakers that they needed protection to survive the coming fire season. And on August 31st, California state legislature passed a utility bailout bill to protect PG&E, its shareholders, and Rothschild investment. At sunrise on Thursday, November 8th, the Camp Fire wildfire began in California. It has all the same anomalies as the Tubbs fire and is already twice as devastating. Many people are asking the same question. Is this an attack? In 2003, Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld and General Richard Myers admit to the development of directed energy weapons and microwave technology. In 2017, Lockheed Martin shoots drones out of the sky with an invisible laser beam that burns them from the inside out. The technology exists, the evidence is there, but the motive? Perhaps it can be found in the United Nations Agenda 21, wherein certain areas of the country are proposed to be off limits to human use. It just so happens that these strange California fires seem to all be within the proposed no human use areas. New regulations and insurance policies are preventing homeowners from rebuilding. And meanwhile, they claim it is the new normal and are now claiming it is a phenomenon of global warming. One thing is for certain, the governor of California has already assured that the people will pay for all of the damages.
was all driven by these by these wind driven uh, embers falling down in this neighborhood. That's where this is getting out of control. larger fires are starting. It's like a war zone. It's just like a, like a bomb just hit, hit each house and just exploded. It's like a war zone. It's just like, um, it's like a bomb just hit, hit each house and just exploded. It's Monday, August 20th, 2018. I'm John Knox here in Los Angeles. It sure is. I'm very concerned about the word anomaly. An anomaly is something which is abnormal, peculiar. It's not easily classified. It's a deviation from the common rule, an irregularity. So the truth of what I'm going to show you today having to do with an anomaly and a guardrail is in this picture. At the Keswick Dam, uh, during the car fire, approximately July 27, 2018. It's a very smoky picture, it's on a highway, and you can see a guardrail with what looks to be the posts, multiple posts, burning like almost highway flares. This is a guardrail post. It's usually Douglas fir, and it's pressure treated with chemicals that are meant to keep it resistant to the weather and be fire retardant. Chemicals that contain arsenic, zinc, and copper. They've been doing it that way since the early 1940s. To get this kind of wood to burn, you need almost a blowtorch of heat. You can see that the wood that I just showed you, the guardrail post is burning like a highway flare, and the trees behind it are not touched. What you can see at the bottom of this picture are four guardrail posts that are not burning. Up here you see two that are burning in the center. Up here you see two that are gone and two that are on fire on the outside. How some will burn, others don't, I don't have an answer for that. But a forest fire did not cause these guardrail posts to burn. Sam's car in our hallway. Sam's car in our hallway. Sam's car in our bedroom. Sam's motor in our bedroom. The police department has called in Joe Cream to come clear the burned cars out. There's not, no oils, there's no gasoline, there's no brake, nothing. The cars are completely burned. Everything is burned in them. We want to do right with everybody. Uh, we're doing this for free. We want to do right with everybody. There's not, no oils, there's no gasoline, there's no brake, nothing. The cars are completely burned. Everything is burned in them. It's a massive job that extends beyond Coffee Park. 
He answers the call by taking the charred shells and loading them on his trucks one by one. There's not, no oil, there's no gasoline, there's no green, nothing. The cars are completely burned. Everything is burned in them. It's a massive job. They go to his yard where they get smashed into scrap, then sent to a recycling center in Redwood City. So what happens once they get to Redwood City? Uh, we're doing this for free. Well, Joe says they're ultimately shredded and then sent to China, where poetically they are made back into cars. And you can see there's really nothing left. There's no money in there for scrap. Going as fast as we can. He's clearing and scrapping for free. One man.